Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we're going to start a new video about actors of the immune system. We know that the immune system aims or is a system responsible to, uh, of defending our body against any pathogen to pro protect our body from diseases and any harmful substance. So the actors of the immune system responsible for this function are three. First of all, there are organs. Then there are cells and there are molecules. In this video, we're going to learn about each of these three acts. First of all, we're going to start with the organs and the organs of the immune system, as we see here in this diagram, are uh, located all around the body. First of all, we're going to start with the thymus, which is found in the chest, and the bone marrow, which is found all around uh, or inside all the bones of the body. But as we grow old, we see that they are only restricted in the long bones. We have the lymph nodes that are also found all around the body. And some lymph nodes are specialized lymph nodes. Like here, we have the tonsils. They are special types of lymph nodes. And there are other examples of specialized lymph nodes, like for example, the appendix, etc. And we have the lymphatic vessels, which are vessels all around the body. And we have, of course, the spleen, which is found next to the stomach. And we can consider the skin as one of the organs of the immune system because it is a natural barrier that stops uh, the uh, entrance of pathogens all around our body if it was intact and healthy. Now, these organs can be classified into two groups. We call them primary organs and secondary organs. The primary organs are the bone marrow and the thymus. And we say that they are primary because we have no immunity without them. Any problem with the bone marrow and the, or the thymus or the immune system or the immunity in the body will be at high risk and it might shut down, it might shut down uh, eventually and the person will be vulnerable uh, or susceptible to many diseases. The other organs or the secondary organs are the spleen, lymph nodes, lymph vessels, and lymph. And we call them secondary because immunity can be compensated if one of them is lost or, uh, for example, removed or anything. Immunity can still be present in the body and the body will be uh, immunized against pathogens even if one of them is lost. Each of these organs have special uh, function or role in the immune system. First of all, we start with the thymus. The thymus is uh, found in the chest. It, uh, it is the site of maturation of what we call T lymphocytes, which we'll, we will learn about later on. Okay, now the bone marrow is uh, what we, we said that it's found in the bone, and it is the site of production of all immune cells. All the immune cells that we are going to talk about are born in the bone marrow. Of course, it's also the site of the production of blood cells, red blood cells, and it is the site of maturation of immune cells except T lymphocytes, which we said that it matures in the thymus. Now, the maturation, we're going to talk about it later on. Okay, so the bone marrow is where all the immune cells are born, produced, and uh, matured, but the T lymphocytes, when they are produced here, they will go to the thymus and they will mature in the thymus. Now, the spleen is the uh, site of the temporary storage of immune cells. When the immune cells are produced and matured, they come and uh, sit here in the spleen. They wait for any infection in order to fight it inside the spleen. So it's a site of storage. The lymph nodes is just like the, the spleen, part of storage also, but the special thing about lymph nodes is its position all around the body. This allows our immune system to be ready. So if any pathogen enters from any place in the body, look here at the lymph nodes, they are located all around the body, and especially around the orifices, or the openings in the body, where pathogens can easily enter. Okay, so the lymph nodes are just like little sacs where immune cells are found. So if anything enters in our body, the immune cells will be very quick and very fast to uh, defend our body. The lymph vessels, just like 
any other vessel are also located all around the body and they are they move parallel to the blood vessels and they carry lymph now what is lymph lymph is a liquid that is made mainly of water and salt and some fats and it circulates between the lymph nodes, between the thymus and the bone marrow, between all these immune uh, organs. And its, uh, its role is to carry the immune cells and other substances. Now, these uh, are the roles of the immune organs. Now, let's start with the immune cells. First of all, the blood, as we know, has many constituents, constituents or substances. If we centrifuge a blood sample, we will see that it separates into its constituents. First of all, a very thin layer of platelets, which are responsible for blood clotting and other uh, roles. The plasma, which constitutes the most part of the blood, 55% of the blood is plasma. It gives the blood its liquidity and it has other roles in the transport and etc. And we have the red blood cells, which are important for transportation of gases and nutrients. And finally, the white blood cells, which we all know, they defend the body against pathogens. Now, what we care about from all these constituents is the white blood cells. Let's see what are the white blood cells. First of all, the immune cells, or what we call the leukocytes, or what we call the white blood cells, are all produced and born where? In the bone marrow. As we see, inside the bone marrow, there are mother cells, or what we call stem cells, that produce these immune cells. Now, the immune cells can be classified into three Types, three main types. First of all, we have the monocytes, then the granulocytes, and the lymphocytes. First of all, starting with the monocytes, as we see here, the monocytes have, uh, they are very large in size, they have a special shaped nucleus, which is called a horseshoe shaped nucleus, or a bean shaped nucleus. It appears very clearly under the microscope. They are the largest of all leukocytes, and their cytoplasm is clear. We can see that there's nothing in there, uh, nothing, nothing clear, uh, obvious or nothing special in their cytoplasm. What they do is that they can cross the capillary walls, they can migrate to the injured tissue, and when they reach the injured tissue, they transform into macrophages. They become large in size, larger, and they have a phagocytic ability. Phagocytic ability is the ability to eat the pathogen or eat any substance. I'm going later on to explain this phagocytosis process. So these are the monocytes. The other type of uh, leukocytes are the neutrophils or what we call the granulocytes. As you see here, they have a multi-lobe nucleus or what we call a polymorphonuclear cells. So we see that the nucleus is as if they are more, it is more than one nucleus, but they are only one, but they are lobed, okay? Their cytoplasm is full with small granules or sacs that uh, contain chemical substances such as histamine. These sacs at certain points will break and release these substances when needed. And these granulocytes also, like monocytes, can cross the capillary walls and have a phagocytic ability as well. They also can eat or devour other substances while uh, or during the immune response. But they have, in addition to monocytes, the ability to secrete certain chemical substances. Now, the lymphocytes. The lymphocytes, uh, they are a large family of cells. There's the T lymphocyte, the T killer lymphocyte, and the T helper. Lymphocyte. All these three are types of lymphocytes. Starting with the B lymphocytes, as we see, they are circular. Okay, they have a round nucleus and they are produced and matured in the bone marrow. As any lymphocyte, it's produced in the bone marrow, but also it matures in the bone marrow. I want to explain maturation in a very brief way. Maturation is to teach the immune cell what is self and what is non-self, who is your friend and who is your enemy. The B lymphocytes get to learn the self and non-self inside the bone marrow. And their 
characteristics is that they fight circulating antigens or molecular antigens, and they can transform into what we call plasma cells that secrete antibodies. Okay, so these are the B lymphocytes, they secrete antibodies. Second type of lymphocyte is the killer T lymphocyte. We can also call them cytotoxic T lymphocytes or T8 lymphocytes. They are also produced in the bone marrow, but they mature in the thymus. They are special lymphocytes. They don't get to learn what is self and non-self inside the bone marrow. They have to go and migrate to the thymus in order to learn there and get their maturation period in the thymus. The, these uh, lymphocytes are responsible for killing infected cells, what we call cellular antigen, such as cells infected by viruses, cancer cells, etc. This, this is their specialty, okay? the T-killer lymphocytes. Now, how do they kill them? They secrete granules or substances that are toxic, and they uh, kill these cells. These details are going to be explained later on in another video. Finally, the helper T lymphocytes, or they are also known as T4 lymphocytes. They are also produced in the bone marrow and matured in the thymus since they are T lymphocytes. And they secrete cytokines, which are special, special substances that direct and control the immune responses. They are the coordinators. They control. The helper T lymphocytes do not kill. They only control. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the molecules of the immune system. The molecules of the immune system are what we call antibodies. As we see, they are Y-shaped proteins. They are proteins that have the shape of the letter Y. They are produced by the B lymphocytes. Responsible cells for producing antibodies is the B lymphocyte. They bind to antigen or cell, like cellular or circulating antigens in either cells or molecules. They can bind to them just like a puzzle, just like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay, so here is the antibody. They have a common site. All antibodies have this site the same, okay, which is the Y shape, but the binding site, the binding fragment of antibodies are different. Each binding site can bind to specific antigens, as we see, because there are different antigens. So, for example, there are antibodies that have the binding site specific to certain bacteria. Because the surface marker of the bacteria has a triangular shape, so there is an antibody that has also, the binding site has a triangular shape. Another antibody, for example, can bind specifically to another antigen like a virus particle, which has another shape of surface marker, a circular shape. So the binding site, as we see, it is circular. Another example here for each uh, antigen, for each non-self molecule or cell, there is a specific antibody that has a specific binding site. Look at the binding site here, circular for circular, triangular for triangular, and etc. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you understood this information and will be back in other videos, inshallah. Take care and goodbye.